Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GameTube, and welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video, the character we're looking into is Spike the Spinosaurus. So we'll look into Spike's location, gameplay mechanics, backstory, and all that good stuff as well. And as always, I will just state everything I say in these videos isn't necessarily linked to the overall lore and universe of FNAF. This is just a fun, cool, creepy story we get to tell, and we hope you enjoy. And lastly, do be sure to subscribe to GameTube as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with all the videos that we post. Alrighty, well, let's get into the character concept of Spike the Spinosaurus. So in our latest chapter of our character concept series, we've been introduced to the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria. A prehistoric themed Freddy Fazbear restaurant with multiple dinosaur themed attractions and characters. So far we've met Roger Rex and Ruby Raptor. Both of these crazed animatronics had their own reasons for wanting to harm the Night Guard. So far, the Night Guard has done their best to fend off these frightening characters. But now we come to the third night shift, and with a new shift comes a new character. So for our next character, we have Spike the Spinosaurus. Spike was of course modelled after the famous dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. These creatures were well known for their long snouts, and of course, their famous large sail on their back. The engineers decided to go with a purple and red colour scheme. Their mouth, like most of the characters here, were filled with rows of pointy teeth. Their body shape was much larger than the other characters at the pizzeria. Their head and neck shape was quite different as well. Because of their long jaws being quite heavy, they needed an extra hydraulic support strut. This would ensure that Spike's mouth would open and close without collapsing under its own weight. So Spike's role up on stage was that of the keyboard player. They'd be playing all their jolly birthday songs right next to Roger and Ruby. Spike was considered to be a successful animatronic. They were quite popular amongst the guests and had their own dedicated fan base. In some instances, due to Spike's size, some of the younger guests would even ride on his shoulders as they walked around. This isn't typically allowed due to safety concerns, but that never really stopped any of the parents from placing their kids up on Spike's shoulders. So all in all, Spike was pretty much a trouble-free character. They made all the guests happy, and that's what counts. But like all animatronics at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria, their problems were only present at night. So the problem the Pizzeria faced with Spike was his obsession with biting. Spike, of course, would never bite any of the guests or workers. They were more interested in biting down on all the furniture and props. Multiple times a night, the guard would catch Spike chewing on various objects, whether it be tables, chairs, or even the prop dinosaur skeletons on display. Since Spike had a powerful bite strength thanks to his hydraulic jaws, not many objects would stand a chance. The restaurant would have to replace multiple different objects every month. This didn't seem to be much of a problem. Ever since they've had Spike, they've never really seen any aggression or biting towards any of the guests or workers. So a couple of broken chairs and props here and there wasn't too much of an issue. The only issue was when Spike bit something they really shouldn't have. So on that unfortunate night, all the characters were roaming around the pizzeria just as normal. The night guard was keeping an eye on all the animatronics and making sure they knew where they were at all times but they couldn't see Spike anywhere. It turns out the repair worker forgot to lock the door to the repair room. With this room being unlocked, Spike was free to enter as they pleased. Spike has never been in here before. They were amazed at all the new and exciting things that they could bite and chew on. One thing in particular that caught their eye was the metal endoskeletons. They've never seen anything like this before. They had so many dangling wires and limbs to chew on. Spike couldn't wait to sink their teeth into them. Little did they know that this is what him and his robotic brothers and sisters looked like underneath their skin. They quickly scanned the strange looking thing, and as far as they could tell, it didn't register as a guest or a worker. To them, this was just an inanimate object. So Spike wasted no time locking their jaws around the Endo's metal skeleton. As they chewed them in their mouth, they accidentally triggered the Endo's reserve power. Its eyes come to life as it wakes up inside of Spike's mouth. The endoskeleton quickly senses it's in danger and attempts to defend itself. 
The Endo tries to claw and strike its way out of Spike's jaws. But there was no way that Spike was letting go. The twisted metal skeleton ripped and tore away the plastic shell from Spike's jaw and arms. After an hour of trying to break free, in the end, Spike was victorious. But that didn't mean Spike was very well off. The Endo managed to do a fair amount of damage to Spike's outer appearance. The most noticeable damage was their sail on their back. The metal Endo managed to kick Spike's inner skeleton, causing it to rip and break through their sail. Also due to Spike using all their power to crush the Endo's skull, this caused their hydraulics to leak oil that would slowly drip out of their mouth. When the workers found the state that Spike was in, they didn't know what to do. Especially since they had a special event happening at the pizzeria very soon. The local museum had agreed to display one of their newest fossils at the pizzeria for a limited time. The pizzeria couldn't have Spike looking like this when the exhibition was on. So they decided to place him in out of order until they can get him repaired. They would still let him roam around at night, but of a daytime they'd have to hide him from the public. So the day finally came when the museum would display the new and rare fossil. It was displayed behind a glass cabinet to ensure no one would touch it. This new attraction brought a lot of attention to the pizzeria. And as far as the manager was concerned, this turned out to be a great success. But when the pizzeria closed its doors and day slowly turned to night, that's when the real trouble began. So it was the guard's duty to keep an eye on the rare and precious fossil. But when it came to Spike, he had another idea. So whilst wandering around, Spike couldn't help but notice the new attraction. The fossil looked so fragile and delicate. The second that Spike would bite it, it would crumble into dust. Spike needed to chew this fossil, more than anything they've ever chewed at the pizzeria to date. So they approached the glass case and drove their mechanical endoskeleton arm straight through the glass. The night guard caught this all on camera. They needed to hurry over to the fossil and stop Spike from destroying it. Just as Spike was about to chomp down on the extremely rare and expensive fossil, the night guard dove in and swiped it from them. And for the first time ever, Spike went to bite a human. Luckily, the night guard got out of the way just in time. Spike didn't know what came over them. All they wanted was that fossil. And the fact that the night guard took it from them angered them very much. The night guard hurried back towards the office with the fossil. They had to keep it safe in the security office. This thing was worth more than their yearly salary 1,000 times over. If anything were to happen to it, they would surely be fired. So, knowing that the fossil was with the night guard, Spike would do anything to get their hands on it. No matter who was in their way. So now, let's get into the gameplay segment of the video. As always, the gameplay loop is inspired by the classic FNAF gameplay model of observation and management. So with the night guard protecting the fossil, Spike will eventually make his way down to the security office. The player will need to keep an eye on the security cameras to locate Spike's position. Spike's starting position would always start in the repair room. Thanks to his dripping trail of hydraulic oil, the player could see where he's been and if they were on the move. So Spike was way too large to fit into the air vents. So at least this was one less way they could enter the security office. So the way they would enter would be through the left hand door. The player can tell if Spike is approaching from the sound of their heavy footsteps. Once they appear, the player would need to shut the door immediately. When the player opens the door again, they would need to look out for Spike's damaged sail. Sometimes he'll hang around and make a second attempt to enter. As it gets later in the night, Spike would become more and more aggressive. Their movement would become faster as they rush towards the door. In some instances, Spike can even chomp down on the door as it comes down. The player would have to repeatedly tap the button in order to force it shut and slam it out of their jaws. 
but if the player can't keep up with Spike and lets him in, they'd be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So I think Spike would be an interesting addition to the Jolly Jurassic roster of characters. They would definitely put the pressure on the player and offer a whole bunch of jump scares. Their design is frightening and off-putting and would definitely creep out the player. Alrighty everyone, well that's all we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting and subscribing as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Also let us know in the comment section down below what you thought of Spike and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty everyone, well until the next video, I'll catch you later. Bye.